Let him be in our right mind. Yes, Lord. All right. Good to be able to come and assemble. Yes, my Lord. In his name. Yes, yes, yes. Assemble for truth's sake. Yes, Lord. Said I searched all over. Search all over. Couldn't find nobody. Say that. Say that. Search high and I searched low. Yes. Still couldn't find nobody. Nobody, nobody greater. Nobody. Nobody. Nobody greater. Yes. Nobody greater than you, Lord. Yes. If you will, turn with me to St. Matthew chapter 21. 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 And when you're there, say amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 21. When he drew near, verse 1, when he drew nigh unto Jerusalem, will come to Bethphage of Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you shall find an ass tied, and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. If any man say aught unto you, you shall say, The Lord hath need of him. Amen. And straightway he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king comes unto you, meek, and sitting upon a donkey, and a coat the fold of a donkey. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, brought the donkey and the coat, put on them their clothes, set him thereon, and a very great multitude spread their garments garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees, strawed them in the way. The multitude that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Yes. Blessed is he that come in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? The multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. You may be seated. You may be seated. <laughs> Verse number nine says, And the multitudes that went before and that followed after cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And when he was come unto Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? Who is this? All right. I want to talk for a few moments today, asking you a question, a simple, simple, simple question, but at the same time, something that you need to answer. Amen. Do you really know who Jesus is? Amen. Do you? I'm not talking about your neighbor, not the person sitting behind you, nor in front of you, nor beside you, but I'm talking to you. Do you really know who he is? Do you really know? Do you really know who the Lord is? Do you really know who Jesus is? Brothers and sisters, as followers of Christ, we have arrived at the 
very important time of the year. Mm -hmm. Today is the beginning of what we call Holy Week. Amen. A very significant increment of time because it details the events that took place before his resurrection from the grave. And on today, we're going to look at what took place on the day that is referred to as Palm Sunday. All right. You will find something about this day in each one of the four Gospels. But by the grace of God and through the leading of the Spirit, we are going to just stick with Matthew 21 uh, for today. Amen. Now, I want you to see the text that as Jesus and his disciples were on their way to Jerusalem, they stopped by a nearby village called Bethphage or Bethphage. Jesus sent two of his disciples into the village to untie a donkey in her coat and to bring them to him. Now, it is significant that I share with you that over in Luke's gospel, Jesus said these words that when you go there, you will see a coat that never a man sat there on. Mm -hmm. Bring them to me. That's right. Now what I saw that was very significant or very uh, noteworthy about him saying that and choosing this particular coat, again, a coat that never a man sat there on. It showed me the importance of availability because it symbolized or signified that this coat, again, was strictly available to the Lord. No one had ever sat or rode on this particular coat. This particular coat was, again, it was pure in so many words. This particular coat, again, it was available unto the Lord. The Lord could specifically use this coat. It was the, the, the only person that would ever ride this coat, or at least the first person to ride this coat would be the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I've told you this before, and you know this now, that it has been said that the best ability you will ever have is availability. Regardless of how much capability you have, it matters not how much you are capable of doing if you're not available to do it. All right. All right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. It does not matter how gifted you are, how much authority you have, how talented you are, how much you know. It does not matter if you're not here, right. if you're not available, Amen. if you don't show up. If you don't make yourself accessible, then what does it matter of your capabilities when you do not have any availabilities? Right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. And another thing is, if you look at the coat by saying no one's ever sat there again, again, not only with the availability to, to the Lord, it's amazing that so many of us have made ourselves so available to everybody else yeah. except him. Yeah. Everybody else has got a piece of us. Oh. And we don't want to give the Lord any of us. Right. But really he deserves all of us. Yeah. Because he's been so good to all of us. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, how available are you to him? How much of him, or how much of you, does he really have? Amen. I'm not asking how much of you does he have on Sunday, uh -huh. but how much of you does he have during Sunday through Saturday? Uh -huh. How much of you does the Lord really have? I'm not asking does he have your money, because some of you may think that giving your tithes and offerings is enough. Uh -huh. But can I tell you, that's not enough. Uh -huh. Can I tell you that even just showing up here on Sundays, that's still not enough. Because in case you did not know, even the devil come to church. And because the devil come to church, I really can't clap my hands because you showed up to church. Because the truth of the matter is, again, just coming to church is not enough. 
because there are a lot of people that come to church but don't come to Christ. And because many that come to church that don't come to Christ, that's why the church is so messed up. But whenever the people in the church come to Christ, then the church can be the church that the Lord wanted the church to be in the first place. Y'all hear what I'm saying here? So again, it's about availability. How much of you does the Lord have? How many days a week does the Lord have you? Are you really available to the Lord? I'm not just talking about available to the church, but available to the Lord. Because some of you may be good workers in the church, but what about outside of the church? Do you share your faith outside of the church? Do you evangelize outside of the church? Do you talk about the goodness of the Lord outside of the church? Do you tell people out there how blessed you are? Do you tell people out there how good God has been to you? What do you do outside of the church? Matter of fact, what do you do in your house? Not just in his house, but what do you do in your house? The sisters, availability is very important. So again, he told them to, once you see this, see these particular animals, untie them, and bring them unto me. Uh Brothers and sisters, they did what the Lord had told them to do. That's right. Matter of fact, he had said this right here. If any man say anything to you or ask you any questions, you shall say the Lord had near them, and straightway he will send them. Let me pause to say this right here to a lot of you that may not know. The Lord has need of you. Can can I tell you this? If the Lord can use a donkey, don't you know he can use you? Don't you know if the donkey can make a difference that you can make a difference as well? Why, preacher? Because you were created in the image of God himself. So don't do you not know that the Lord has need of you? Let me tell you something. The Lord has a need for you. The Lord has a work for you to do. The Lord wants to take you some places and send you some places. The Lord has a great need for you because there's a great work that needs to be done. And because he has deposited so much in you, he didn't put it in you for you to just sit down on it. But he put it in you so you can go and do the work that he called you to do so you can bring glory to his name. The Lord has need of you. Hold you back from doing what the Lord wants you to do. Are you hearing me here? You'll be amazed at how many people allow kinfolk to keep them back from doing what God wants them to do. You'll be amazed at how many people uh, allow their spouses and allow their siblings to hold them back from being what God wants them to be and doing what God wants them to do. Can I tell you something? Uh, You cannot stand for your spouse when it's time to stand before the Lord. And because you can't stand for your spouse and your spouse cannot stand for you, it behooves you to make sure that you are right with the Lord and that you are following God's will for your life. Y'all quiet on me right now. I'm going to talk to you anyhow because at the end of the day, when you stand before God, nobody can stand for you but you. Your siblings can't stand for you. Your mom and daddy can't stand for you. Your children can't stand for you. No, only you can stand for you. And the question he wants to know is, what did you do with the life he gave you? What did you do with the gifts he gave you? What did you do with what he deposited inside of your spirit? The Lord has a need of you. Regardless of what you've done in your past life, the Lord still can use you. Don't care how many times you have fallen by the wayside, the Lord still can use you. Don't care how many times you have went in the wrong direction, yet at the same time because you still have breath in your body, the Lord still can use you. Can I tell you something? You have some experiences that other folks don't have, the Lord can use you. Yeah, yeah, can I tell you something? You have some experiences that some church folk don't have, the Lord still can use you. You have some experiences that some folk have been raised in the church all their lives, they don't have, the Lord can use you. Because there's some folk out there that need what you have, because the Lord can still use you. You have been on the other side of the track, the Lord can still use you.
you otherwise. Because some people will try to make you feel unworthy because they haven't done the wrong that you have done. They haven't fallen as, as low as you have fallen. But what they don't understand is there's a group of people out there that need your testimony. There's a group of people out there that need to know how the Lord did it for you. How he brought you up out of the house. He turned you around. Please understand, there are some folks, there's some people out there that ain't going to never go to because they are too high and mighty. somebody needs to hear. You have a testimony. Your life to help some young girl. Your life to help some young man. You have some stuff that you have dealt with and went through that can help bring somebody else free. You can tell somebody, honey, I've been down that road. Don't go down that road. Ain't nothing down that road. You can tell somebody, homeboy, I've been down there. You can let that go. It ain't nothing on the other side of that. You have a that somebody needs. The Lord has a need of you. I want you to keep that in your mind. The Lord can still use me. Matter of fact, say this, the Lord can still use me. No, no, say it like you mean it. The Lord can still use me. And he said, Say to them, the Lord had need of them. And straightway he would send them. So after they brought him the coat and the donkey, the text says they did something very noble and selfless. There was no saddle for the coat. So what they did was they put their own clothes on the coat their own clothes on the coat uh -huh. so the Lord can sit down on the coat. So he wouldn't have to sit down on the coat's bare back. They put their own clothes on the coat so the Lord can have something to sit on while he rolled the coat. The text says after they set him on the coat and began the journey to Jerusalem, a multitude of people gathered and began to spread their clothes among the road. Let me pause for a second. Some of us have more than what we need. Yeah, amen. Listen to me now. The text said these guys, these disciples, took their own clothes and put them on the coat for the Lord to ride on. Other folk amongst the multitude took their own clothes, wow. put them on the road. Because yeah. you have to understand, when they put their clothes on the road and put the palm branches on the road, it was almost like rolling out the red carpet. Yeah. Because a very important person was in the area. Yeah. And so they wanted to make sure they honored him, so they put their own clothes on the ground, right. on the road. For him to ride on. Their own clothes. They 
they put their own clothes on the road and you know it was a dirt road. They put their own clothes on the dirt road for the Lord to ride on. Amen. Amen. The last time you blessed somebody with your clothes. Now let's talk for a few minutes. How many of y'all got more clothes than what you need? Talk back to me, somebody. Come on, put two hands in the air. You know I'm talking to you. If you got more clothes than what you know you need, put your hands high in the air again. How many of y'all know y'all need to get rid of some of that stuff? You should have went to me yesterday. I went over to Goodwill and I just gave them some stuff. Because I realized it just sitting there, hanging there, and occupying space. There's somebody that needs this stuff. Some of the stuff are brand new, still in the bag. But I gave it, and the lady asked me, Did you want, do you want to receive? I said, no, I'm good, because I didn't give it to get anything. I didn't get it to be recognized. I gave it because somebody else needs it, somebody else can use it. God has blessed me, so it's time for me to bless somebody else. Even with something as little as your clothes. Somebody needs those shoes you don't wear. Somebody need that dress that's been hanging up in the back of that closet for a year and a half and you still have lost the weight to get in it. Somebody needs that dress. Somebody needs that suit. You have been hanging up in the closet thinking that at any given moment you're going to get in that suit. Baby, you ain't getting that suit. Somebody needs that suit. If God enabled you to get that one, he can enable you to get another one. Bless somebody stuff you don't wear. Talk to me, some of y'all crying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, some of y'all just greedy. <laughs> Talk to me, somebody. Yeah. Some of y'all think that you need it, but you're not needy, you're just greedy. Yeah. Bless somebody else. The same God that enabled you to get it in the first place, if you bless somebody else, that's going to open up your closet for God to bless you with something else. Y'all gonna bless somebody this week with some clothes. I'm gonna ask you again next Sunday. And I'm gonna see who did it. They got little clothes bins everywhere these days. In the gross, grocery store parking lot, Lowe's parking lot, they got a goodwill in every corner. You can't say you can't get it. We, you can put it, bring it down. You know, we got enough stuff down there. But let me take it somewhere. Because it need to be cleaned out down there. Brothers and sisters, they put the stuff in the road. Again, it was synonymous to rolling out the red carpet in honor of a very important person. And in this case, the people thought that Jesus, they thought now that he was an incoming king that would liberate them out from under Roman control. All right. So as Jesus was strolling along the road on the coat, the multitude began crying out, Hosanna to the son of David. Yes. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the house. Brothers and sisters, let me Paul to tell you this. Hosanna means save now. Uh -huh. Or save we pray. Again, save now. Or save we pray. This is actually taken from Psalm 118, verse 25 or 26, when it says, Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. All right. O Lord, I beseech thee. Send now prosperity. Blessed be he that comes in the name of the Lord. Again, Psalm 118, verse 25, 26. Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. Blessed be he that comes in the name of the Lord. Please understand. Not only was it a song of praise, but it was also a plea for help. Please understand, the people here, 
They are not just exuberant, but they are also expectant. However, the people have misconstrued the Lord's assignment. They're expecting liberation from Roman control, but the Lord came to liberate them from satanic control. They wanted momentary freedom, but he came to give eternal freedom and eternal victory. All right, right. In the point, in, 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 this, in this particular moment right here in the text, they're treating him like a king. My Lord. But they don't know him as the king of kings. All right. They're treating him like a savior. But they don't know him to be the savior of their soul. Matter of fact, they only see him from an earthly perspective. Therefore, they don't realize just how much power and authority Jesus really has. He didn't just come to conquer the kingdom of Rome. He came to conquer the kingdom of darkness. Matter of fact, the kingdom of darkness that was controlling Rome and controlling common everyday man. Can I tell you something, brothers and sisters? Yes, sir. Here you have the multitude. They are honoring and praising the Lord as they should. They are honoring and praising the Lord as they should. But they really don't know specifically what he really came to do. Brothers and sisters, that's why it's important for us to know the Lord. Yeah. To know who he really is because when we really know who he is, it is then that we become seated with him in heavenly places. Yeah. And when we are seated with him in heavenly places, it changes our perspective on life. Yeah. Yeah. It changes how we see things because we are seated in a different place. Yeah. And when you're seated in a different place, in a different dimension, you see things differently. You perceive things differently. You interpret things differently because then you realize again that now you are seeing things as he sees things. And it's important, brothers and sisters, that we see things as he sees things. Because when we see things as he sees things, we see things uh, as being minute as opposed to being humongous. In other words, what we see in the physical as a giant problem, he sees in the spiritual as an opportunity to show forth his power. Amen. Amen. Please understand, they just saw things from an earthly perspective. So what they think is that he has come to liberate them from Roman control. The text says, when he was come to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, who is this? And the people said, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Again, that was the answer. Yes, they recognized him as Jesus and a prophet, but they didn't know who he was in totality. All right. They saw him recognizing that Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth but didn't know him in the totality of who he was. Oh, yeah. Jerusalem, brothers and sisters, is also called the city of David. Jerusalem is also called the city of God. Amen. But here you have people within the city of God that don't know who the Son of God is. All right. All right. Can I tell you something? Yes, sir. It's like that today. You have people in the house of God, well, but don't know the God of the house. Because if you really knew the God of the house, you would not allow the devil to have a field day in your life. Because if you knew the God of the house, you would call on the God of the house to come and meet you where you were and change, change some things around in your life. Not only that, but if you knew the God of the house, you would come here and honor the God of the house. I'll tell you something. See, this is how I know when people 
are really here for the right reason. Because if people are here for the right reason, they're going to come because of the God of the house and not because of the people in the house. Because if you come because of the God of the house, you're not going to let the people in the house turn you away. Because you understand you didn't come to worship the people in the house, but you came to worship the God of the house. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? When you come to worship the God of the house, then the people in the house do not have the last say over your life. When you understand why you come here, it makes a difference in y'all hear what I'm saying. How many came here because of the God of the house? If you came because of the God of the house, why don't you give the God of the house a good praise? to this man riding on a donkey. That's right. They, they, they heard this group of people mm-hmm. crying out to this man riding on a donkey. Matter, matter, matter of fact, in one particular gospel, the Pharisees wanted the people to be quiet. Well, but Jesus said to them, I tell you, if these folk hold their peace, uh-huh. Then the rocks are going to cry out. Old Psalm said, I don't need no rocks crying out for me. Brothers and sisters, here you have people inside the city. They hear loud, no, they hear people uh, calling on his name and, and crying out and praising his name, hollering out, hollering Hosanna in the highest. And, and blessed be he that comes in the name of the Lord. And, and they see all oh, this, this stuff going on and, and, and they're wondering, who is this? What means all this noise? And what would mean is all, all, all this crowd of people? All thing they see is a man on a donkey. Well, that's right. 
People giving praise and reverence to a man on a donkey. People lifting up their voice because of a man on a donkey. No matter what, people excited and expecting great things uh, because of a man on a donkey. But can I tell you something? He wasn't just a man on a donkey. He, he, he wasn't just a man on a donkey. Oh, Lord, have mercy on me. He, he wasn't just a man on a donkey. Brothers and sisters, they asked, who is this? Before I go any further, I'm going to ask you this simple question. Do you really know who he is? All right, man. I mean, I'm, I really, I'm really asking this sincerely. Do you really know who Jesus is? I'm not talking about what you heard, but do you really know who he is? Well, watch this. Could it be that you don't trust him like you need to? Because you really don't know who he is. Could it be that you don't love him like you need to? Because you really don't know who he is. Could it be that you don't pray to him like you need to? Because you really don't know who he is. Could it be, brothers and sisters, that you don't serve him like you really need to? Because you really don't know who he is. Could it be, brothers and sisters, that you don't praise him like you need to? Because you really don't know who he is. Could it be that you don't honor him like you need to? Because you really don't know who he is. Can I tell you something? If you really knew who he was, you would not need a cheerleader. All right, all right, all right. If you really knew who he was, you wouldn't need anybody to pump you up. If you really knew who he was, you, you, you wouldn't need anybody uh -huh, to, 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 to push you to praise his name. If you really knew who he was, you wouldn't need anybody to twist your arm to go out and do good things in his name. Because if you really knew who he was, you would think about how good he's been to you. And because of how good he's been to you, you want to be just as good as somebody else. You would think about because he's been so good to me, let me take a moment and be good to somebody else.
then why do you have no peace? Do you really know who he is? Then why do you have no joy? Do you really know who he is? Then why do you have no expectations? Do you really know who he is? Then why do you have no hope? Do you really know who he is? Then why do you cry more than you smile? Do you really know who he is? Then why do you always believe the report of the doctor and never believe the report of the word? Can I tell you something I told you before? It's good to have a good doctor, but you got to know that he is a certain person called the great physician. And because of the great physician, I know that a great physician is able. Yes. The sisters, the question is, do you really know who he is? Just in case you don't. Let me take a few moments to tell you who he is. Somewhere you will read that he is the rose of Sharon. Yes, he is. He's Ezekiel's wheel in the middle of the wheel. He's Joshua's battle axe. Abraham's ram in the bush. The Hebrew boy for the man in the fire. Somewhere he is the root of Jesse. The way, the truth, and the life. He is the dog of the sheep. He's called the fountain of living water. He's called the good shepherd. And he's called the bread of life. He's called the author and finisher of our faith. Called the shepherd and bishop of our souls. He's called the chief cornerstone. He's called Emmanuel. Somewhere he's called Savior. Redeemer. He's called Lord.
good to me. It's good to me. Now, let us stand. 